My name is uh, Colby Stone. I'm a software engineer at IBM. I work in the digital workplace engineering division, which means I get to make applications for IBMers and make them more productive in their day-to-day -day work. Um, in terms of my background, I've been a software developer for about uh, 13 years. I um, was mostly self-taught until I went to UMass Amherst for my degree in computer science. We've been using Vue for about a year now at IBM in my division, and uh, so we've come up with a few techniques to better uh, make your code, uh, let, use less duplication, and uh, keep your uh, files small, just some techniques to go over. Uh, so I'm going to cover some slots, mix-ins, and Vuex modules. So we're going to start with slots. So let's say you have a website, and in that website you have a concept of uh, dialogues. So you, have, you might have a edit your profile dialogue, a upload an image dialogue, and a terms and conditions dialogue. So these would all be components, and you'd have pretty much the same code in them. So you let's just look at the form dialogue. You might have a header section that would have your H2 um, with edit your profile. Then you might have a section for your form for the profile, the name and bio. And then you'd have some section for your buttons. And then in your upload dialog, you might have the same header, uh, an upload container, and a row for your buttons. And then in your terms, no surprise, you might have a header a middle section for the main content, and then a section for your buttons. Well, with slots, we can fix this. So we could create a base dialog um, that would have all that code that we have that's duplicated in it. And then we can use slots to put in a placeholder where we might put some code later on. So if we name the slot, we can name it header. We can put in a slot and name it main, and then we can create a slot and name it actions. The thing with slots is we can also have defaults, default code in these slots. So here I put in the cancel and save button um, and that would automatically get added in when you add that slot. Um, so if we come back out to the form dialog, we just import that base dialog and then in the, um, on the H2, we just give it the attribute of slot and header and then that's going to go into that slot that we created for the header. And then we have a slot main, and then we might put our profile HTML in there. And I, as you notice, I didn't include that uh, slot for the actions. That's because they have the save and cancel button that I used as a default, so we don't have to add it into our dialog. It'll automatically get in there, and here's that um, example of what it was looked like. And then if we uh, look at the upload dialog, it's pretty much the same thing. We have the H2 that is our um, header, a slot that's the main, and then we don't need to insert that um, action slot. Now the terms and conditions is a little bit different because it had an accept and decline button, right? So all we have to do for that is just add in the slot and then put in whatever we want to override with what was in there before. So that's slots, and uh, yeah, the next uh, technique that I want to talk about is uh, mixins, and mixins are defined as a flexible way to distribute reusable code um, in your view application. So let's see how we can leverage those to clean up our code. So let's say you have a couple of lists on your site, maybe a blog and some contacts, and each of those have a filter on the uh, page, right? And when the user types in that filter, it filters down that list and will only show what matches that filter. So your code might look something like this where you have an input that has a model on it with the term and then that input calls a filter list which passes the list, the attribute to um, filter on and then the term that the user is typing in that filter and we do that. But we have duplicate code in both of our contact and our blog, and we, don't, we want to get rid of that duplicate code. So we can create a mixin and uh, just export an object that has methods on it, and we put that filter list in there, 
and um, save it to a filter mix in JS. And then we just have to import that into each of our um, view files and give it the key of mixins and then give that mixin in there. So now we have access to that um, method in both of our um, view files without having to rewrite it and then we can rewrite the uh, method in one place if we want to change something to it. But let's say for some reason we wanted to have one mixin that, let's say that mixin had a bunch of other methods on it, but we wanted to lowercase the filter list on one of them. Well, we can easily do that by overriding the um, filter list method by just redefining it in the component and that will override what was in the mixin. So mixins are cool because you can, you can have data, you can have computed properties, you can have methods, and those will all be overwritten if you redefine them in the component that you use them in. But you can also have created and mounted um, functions, which are the hook functions. And the weird thing about those that you just want to keep an eye out for is that those will also be called from the mixin. So if you, input, if you have a created um, function and you import that mixin, that mixin is going to get called, and then the created for the component that you bring it in for will be called. So just something to keep an eye out for. But that's how mixins can uh, help us uh, get our code distributed through the app and only have to write it once. Uh, and then the final topic I wanted to talk about was Vuex modules. Um, so with Vuex, we have a single state tree in our application, which is just one big object. And if our application scales, then that object gets big really quick and uh, gets out of control. You can have stuff that you're updating pages, you're updating profiles, and it's all mixed together. So with Vuex modules, we can break that out a little bit. We could create a page store JS in the uh, modules folder and then give a namespace true. I'll get into that in a little bit. And then that's its own store. And then we just export that. Same thing with the user store in a modules folder. Just keep the user store data in there. And then back in our main store, we import both of those stores. And then in the modules, we'll have um, a list of the stores that we want to bring in. So the reason that we namespace it, if we didn't namespace it, we would have, we would call things like this.store.dispatch and then delete page and this.store.dispatch uh, delete page. I don't know why I would <laughs> duplicate it. Um, but with, when we namespace it, we can call this.store.dispatch and then use that namespace of page store to call delete page. So maybe we had delete page in both of the user store and the page store for some reason. Since it's namespace, then we can call them both delete page and do that. Um, so when you namespace it, you just add the name in front of it and then call what you would normally call. Um, getters are a little different. You just pass it in an array with the um, string of how you want to call it with the namespace. Uh, yeah, so in your um, modules, if you want to access the root store, so you want to do something that's in the main store, you, can, you have access to the root state and root getters from this object, and then you can easily call um, root state dot count and use this current state's count. Um, you could call the root getters and use one of the root getters, but and then you can also call um, commit, um, mutations and actions from there, from the root, by just passing it the root equals true, or root true in um, the commit and dispatch. And then you can even um, call other modules actions from your module by putting root true and then just using the namespace that you were using before. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much what I had on uh, mix-ins, modules, and um, slots. And if you're interested in more about them, I uh, check out the view documentation. It's really great at explaining what they are. And then the Vuex um, documentation is great at module explanation.
um, thank you. And uh, if you want to connect with me, I'm on LinkedIn at Colby J. Stone. And uh, yeah, are there any questions? Yes. On the first section, uh, is there a rule of thumb you use when to use a prop as something in like a header and when to go with a slot? Uh, I guess it would just depend on the situation. There's multiple ways to fix problems, but um, so if you wanted to just pass a prop, you could, that would be one way, another way to do it, yeah, and just have it um, render out with that, yeah. You could do it that way. And with the um, second section that mixes, yep. I missed, I think, one thing you said. So is it a, a real inheritance situation where you get to have time to office and you can call a super method if it's the same name, like when you put them in the end, or are they both getting called simultaneously from both? So the methods you can override, and then it won't call that original method. Right. Can you call super? Can you yeah. call? You, you, could, you could call, call the super. super. You can. Yep. Yep. I was wondering if you could talk more about the separation of concerns in Nixon's, like where you store your data and that versus like the component and how much they should know about each other. Sure. Yeah, we we've just started using Mixins to pass our um, methods around mostly. So we haven't really passed much data around. We have, we keep most of our data in the store and then use the Mixins for passing around methods and computed properties. Thank you.